we're going to take a look at another example that, while slightly different, is essentially the same process. We're dealing again with multiple tensional forces and an angled tension force here. But in this problem, notice the rope A and rope B are not directly attached to the box. They're attached to what we call a knot, or a place in the middle where all of the ropes meet. So when you're dealing with a situation like this, we're going to be drawing our force diagram for the, the knot, or the place where all the ropes meet, and we'll see why in a moment. But essentially, it's the same problem as before. So as always, I'll begin by drawing an interaction diagram, and this time, I'll show the knot as one of my objects. All right, so I've gone ahead and listed all of the objects in my scenario. I've also included the wall here because rope A is attached to the wall and not the ceiling. And I've drawn in all my interactions. Uh, notice again, I'm not including the gravitational force between the earth and any of the ropes, because by this point, I'm assuming that all of my ropes are massless or have no mass, which again, is an assumption we make when solving these problems. The next thing I'll do is draw a force diagram around the knot. So I've gone ahead and drawn the three tensional forces acting on the knot. of The force of rope A pulling the knot to the left, the force of rope B pulling the knot upwards at a 30 degree angle. And remember, this is 30 degrees here because right here, this angle is 30 degrees. And if I draw a line parallel to the ceiling, then I know that this line that bisects these two parallel lines will give me the same angle on the other side. And then uh, rope C is pulling the knot straight down. So I have my force diagram. What I'm going to do now is redraw my force diagram after I split vector B or force B into its X and Y components. Pause the video and see if you can split vector B into its X and Y components and then redraw the force diagram yourself. Okay, so I've gone ahead and redrawn my force diagram. The X component of B is B cosine 30 and the Y component would be B sine 30 where again, B is the tension in that rope. If I look below, I've redrawn that diagram showing those components pointing up and to the right. Now, in order to solve, I need a bit more information. What is the force that the rope C exerts on the knot? How can I obtain this? Well, let's take a look at the force diagram for the block itself to see if this can give us any additional information. If I draw a system boundary around the block on my interaction diagram, I see there are two forces acting on the block. The earth pulling the block down and rope C pulling the block up. So I see here that the block is acted on by two forces, and those forces are opposite in direction. Because the block is not accelerating, I know then these forces must be equal to each other for the acceleration of this block to be zero. I know the force that the Earth exerts on the block is the mass of the block, 10 kilograms, times 9.8, our gravitational constant, which would be 98 newtons. So then I, I know as well that the force that rope C exerts on the block will also be 98 newtons. It must be in order for this block to remain at rest and not be accelerating. An important note about tension here, because this rope is the same as this rope, right? They're the same rope. Um, tension will pull on either object the rope is connected to with the same force. So if that rope is connected to the block and the knot, then it will pull up on the block just as hard as it pulls down on the knot. So I know that this force will also be 98 newtons. And you might have expected this, right? The force in that rope is just equal to the weight of that block. That's all. If you're unsure about that, you can draw a force diagram for rope C, and you'll see that by Newton's third law, the force that the rope exerts on the block will be equal to the force that the rope exerts on the knot. All right, now we have enough information to solve this problem. Let's go ahead and write out the sum of forces in the horizontal and vertical directions once again. I've gone ahead and made a table on the right, just like before. If I call right and up positive, then the sum of forces in the x direction would be b cosine 30 minus the force of tension in rope a. And that'll be equal to the mass of the knot times the acceleration of the knot in the x direction, which is just zero. Then in the y direction, that would be b sine 30 minus 98 newtons, which again is equal to zero because nothing in the system is accelerating. That will give me a system of equations that looks like this. In this case, this system is even easier to solve than our previous one because equation two only has one unknown, and that's b. So I'm going to use equation two to solve for b and then plug that in 
to equation 1 to solve for a. So if I move the 98 over to the other side, that would give me b sine 30 is equal to 98. And then I would divide both sides by sine of 30 to clear the coefficient of b. Then b would be 98 over sine 30. And I know sine 30 is 1 half, so that would be 98 over 1 half, which is the same thing as 98 times 2, which is 196 newtons. I can then take this value and plug it in for b in the first equation. That would be 196 cosine 30 minus a is equal to 0. So I know that a is 196 cosine 30. Plugging this into my calculator, I get that a is equal to 170 newtons. And once again, I've already solved for the tension in rope C earlier. The tension in rope C we said was 98 newtons. So uh, I'll write my answers up here in the right-hand corner. All right, and there you have it. So this problem was slightly different because all of the ropes connected at a point that we called the knot. So when we did this problem, we identified that we should draw our force diagram for the knot because the knot will have all tensional forces acting on it. And we can use that in our force diagram. So that's essentially the only thing that's different about this kind of problem. Everything's the same. Draw your interaction diagram, draw a force diagram for the knot, redraw your force diagram showing any angled forces instead as their components, and then write out the sum of forces in the horizontal and vertical directions. Then you'll set those equal to uh, mass times acceleration, which in these problems will be zero. And then we'll have a system of equations that we can use to solve for any unknowns that we may want to solve for. This concludes the video tutorials for tension and static equilibrium. Please take a look at Canvas for additional practice problems to exercise this skill.